It's just if this, then that. Yeah. Okay. You've got to check for certain things. You've got to start going backwards and start figuring out what must be going on that's causing this bad thing to happen. Uh, in general, the taller you are, the closer to the ball you are, and the shorter, the farther away you are. This is a great feel, so... I bet it does, yes. Weird. <laughs> uh, life is hard, and then you die. <laughs> <laughs> here we go, here we go. Very good. All right. Was that too much, John? No, no, it, not no at it all. wasn't. <laughs> Next club. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see it. What are we doing? So, uh... so seven iron. Okay. Now, what did we just do there? We cured the pole. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We also know what to do in case it's fat. Okay. So that's a good thing. Good. What you showed me before was a punch shot. Sometimes you'll need one of those, but not all the time. Okay. Oh. Okay, well you started that right beautifully. Nice <laughs> job. Okay, now set up to this one and let me know when you're ready. Okay. Right. Okay, you got it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Now don't move a muscle. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Okay, now oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get out of there. Okay, all right now. Can you tell from this angle what's wrong with this picture? Um, I'm too close. Yes, you can see it, can't you? Yeah. Why would you be able to tell me that I was way too close in one second and stand this close to it? Uh, I just saw the club. You don't know what it feels like. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Now, now the, the problem with this that makes it hard for you is because the handle is too high. Remember, it shouldn't be higher than the top of the crotch. So if I took the handle of this club and I put it down at the correct angle, well, I wouldn't be able to stand here. I'd have to go back to where I should go, right? So that little attention to detail and knowing that the handle being low is gonna help you get your distance away good is fine, but you're just trying to make sure you're nice and parallel and the club is good, so everything's fine from here, right? No, no it's not. Okay, yeah. all right. That's the other thing I wanna make sure that, that doesn't happen, and that is when you're doing a test and you find something that, wow, that's the key to fix that problem, okay? If you're, if you're trying to use something that's supposed to fix the problem and it's not fixing it, there's a much better chance that something's wrong statically before you begin to move yeah. than you're not doing it 10 times in a row. So here's a, another way to look at it in case you're on the range and you're, you forget. It's all based on the five iron. So I'm gonna set up to this five iron and get ready to go. Okay, I'm the correct distance away from it. And now if I took the club and I hook this around the back of my left heel, the end of the club will be somewhere within the diameter of the ball. So a ball's 1.68 inches in diameter, anywhere in there is fine. Yeah. Okay. If I do the same thing with a driver and get set to go, and I hook the driver around the back of my left heel, it will not reach to the ball. And interestingly enough, if I do it with a wedge and I put it around my heel, not only will it go past the ball, but it'll go past the ball exactly as much as the driver is short of it. So it'll go right to there. Okay. Got it. So, in, so what that means is that if that's a five iron, then all the longer clubs are gonna be more this way. If that's a five iron, all the shorter clubs would be more that way. So if you are, all the clubs are out here too much, then you're standing too close. Well, what that means is we go back to the seven iron, okay, and we do this one. Wow, we're really too close, aren't we? Yeah. Now, there's a little room for, for leniency here. Uh, in general, the taller you are, the closer to the ball you are, and the shorter, the farther away you are, but it's within that little ball diameter. It's not that much. So if you're, if you're an inch and half an inch away, that's not bad, but if we're six inches away, stick a fork in you, you're done. Repeat after me, this is the normal distance away for a seven iron. Let me hear you say it. <laughs> this is the normal distance for a seven iron. <laughs> okay, that, now. Yeah, that's definitely a problem. I, yes, I don't yes, really yes. know consistently. Yes, yes, stand. yes. Does practice help you if you are standing the wrong distance away from it and you have something wrong with that? No. So you'd be getting an effect from something else, wouldn't you? Yeah. So the first thing you gotta have is, is a good setup to begin with. Okay, now yeah. put the club against the ball. Feels kind of far away to you, doesn't it? But yeah. your hands are still a little high, so they need to be lower. So you're now are your fist away. That square, that's terribly closed. That square looks a little open to you too, doesn't it? Yeah, a little bit. Now step away for a practice, that much. Now see if you can hit the ground. You can do it. 
Very good. Okay, that's all I want. Oh. Very good. Did you start the ball to the right of the target? Yes, yeah. you did. Congratulations. Yeah. That's what's supposed to happen. So you taught yourself to get ahead, and you did that beautifully. Excellent job. Okay, now I want you to set up to this one and get completely ready to go and let me know when you're set. Okay. Okay, good. Make sure your hands are down low enough, right to there. That's very good. Okay, yeah. now, okay. Now we're gonna bring this all the way up here. Okay, we're gonna take that one off, keep that one on. Now I'm gonna take this T and I'm gonna go straight up from here, and I am not hitting that pad. Uh. That's a gigantic slice. Okay. okay. Now, uh, another way to look at it is you kept that finger on and took this finger off and took those three fingers off, it falls out of your hand. Mm. The very first day, the eight fundamentals of the grip, one of the ones I said is you take that off and that off, if that pad's far enough over, you'll be fine. Mm. If it's over here and you, you take that off and that off, it'll fall out. Got it. But see, that's underneath the club. You can't see that very well, can you? Yeah. Here's a question. What if it feels ultra close, like way too close to you, what should you do? Um, Test for it. Yeah. Test for it. Now that one went too far right, wouldn't it? So if it was too closed, you'd start the ball to the right and then would hook too much. Well, now get back on those two again. Good, right hand up here. Okay, just hold it in place. Thumb and forefinger together, get ready to go. What time is it? So you should be able to see this and your hand should be on this side. And if that's a part, you also have no chance. Okay, <laughs> so now we're talking. So that's perfect. Coming from here, pad on the right, thumb on the right. Now close it, bang, fingers on the left, pull it towards you. But now let's do the extra test. Take this one off, hold that out there. Now with the club face straight up and down, see the little white line on your club face? Yeah. Okay. Here's straight up and down as well. I'm hitting that pad now. Yeah. Okay, now, when I put my right hand over that, keep that right there, squeeze again. Okay, that fits into the pocket formed by that hand. Now, when you put your right hand over it, okay, feels very closed to you, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, but see, you shouldn't look at that. You should twist until it looks there. Okay, now, before you go any farther, you feel like you have a funny, very hooky grip, don't you? Yes. Okay, but see, here's what's gotta happen, is we have to sculpt it. Okay, so, so your left hand and my right, or your left hand and my left hand are the same. When I put this on over it, I'm sculpting it to make it look pretty, and it doesn't look that bad, because you're a little bit underneath here, it doesn't look quite as, as good, but it's still effective. Mm -hmm. So, God knows you need to be prettier, but not, <laughs> don't worry about your grip. Okay, so, so, because that feels more closed, you would have a reasonable expectation that the ball wouldn't go as far right as on the last one, right? That is what I would expect. That's what you would expect. Now step away for the practice. Now see if you can hit the ground and go to a full finish again up to your neck. Good. Now try one and see what happens. Oh my God. Not bad, not bad. So it didn't go way right, did it? Okay, yeah. now why did it pull? Uh, because I didn't get ahead? That's right. Okay, yeah. now see, you were thinking about just keeping it from going left. So because your grip has been a little off, what you've been doing to keep it from going left is instead of getting properly ahead, you've been staying back, which gives you more time to square the club up. You know how to get ahead. You're, we've been doing that for the last 40 minutes, okay? So give me a practice swing with that same grip. Try to get ahead, but go up to your collar. So practice swing, uh, 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 step back for that practice swing. Okay, so get ahead a little more, but go to a full finish. Very good, okay, now see if you can get ahead enough to start it to the right of the target, good luck. Oh, okay, that's all right, that's all right. Did you hit the ground? No. No, you didn't, okay. This grip so, that's feels okay. so. okay, I'm gonna help, uh... I'm gonna help. Step back away again for a second, just a couple inches, okay. So the club's coming down. So yeah. when it's coming down, you gotta let it come down. Now it's hitting there because we're not turning enough, but if we turn more, you could hit the ground, you could hit it farther forward. Beautiful, very good. Now be determined to do that. This is great feels so... No, I bet it does, yes. Weird. <laughs> uh, life is hard and then you die. <laughs> here we go, here we go. Not bad, Jerome, not bad. Mm. See, you gotta win little battles. You gotta be able to fix one thing, but see, see how when you try to fix one thing, sometimes another thing goes away. 
Yeah. And so then, oh yeah, I forgot to get ahead, that's why I pulled it, or I forgot to turn, and that's why I hit it fat. But see, when you're isolating one little problem, if you can make something happen that makes that better, then you were successful. Yeah. Okay, so we fixed fat shots already, we fixed pulls already, and we fixed the tendency to go way right. So now it's time for the driver. Okay. <laughs> go get your driver. <laughs> now you've been playing some executive courses where a driver is, is hit far less frequently than on a full-size course. Yeah. When we play, we're gonna play a full-size course, so you're gonna have to hit the driver 14 times. Oh, okay. oh my God. All right, so, so see, a driver is a magnifying glass. It gives you more of everything. So if it's a good one, it goes higher, farther, the crowd goes wild, okay? If it's a little slice with a seven iron, it's a big slice with a driver, isn't it? Yes. The other difference is that this is the only club that you do not hit the ground with. If you hit the ground with every other club and you don't hit the ground with this one, do you have to make a different swing to make that happen? No. No, yes, very good. You make a different setup. Yeah. So the setup is critical with the driver. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I want you to take, go through one routine, okay, and try to take a practice swing that does not hit the ground. See if you can go through without losing your balance and take one shot so we have a baseline to compare against. Very good. Excellent. Now right to the ball. Okay. Did you see it? No, I have no idea. You didn't? Okay. <laughs> okay, so it popped up and started a little left. So come on back here for a second. Okay, so, so when you hit down on a little, you get a little low squirter. Mm -hmm. The bulge and roll on the club is not, doesn't make, not make the club forgiving. When you hit down on it more, it pops up and you make the funny marks on the top of the club. See these marks you have right there? Okay. They, they call them snowballs, or if somebody doesn't like you, they call them idiot marks. You take a little sunscreen and you put it on that, that'll make that go away and your club's not damaged. Okay. But when that happens and somebody pops it up, they always say, oh, I got under it. Oh, it must be teed up too high. Okay. Not at all. See, if you teed it down lower, it'd make you want to go forward and hit down on it even more. Okay, so the hardest thing with the driver is that you got to make the same swing as you do with the other clubs, but you got to play it so far forward so that doesn't happen. The moment that you do that and you stay back even a little and you pull it, then if you walk up here and you catch it earlier in the arc, it'll start to the right. And you think, well, that's much better. I better stay up here. But then you're going to increase the descent when you do it. Mm -hmm. So to be able to play it properly forward, remember, chin between the feet, chin 10 inches behind the ball, club at the belt buckle with the handle behind the club head and then to prevent the club face from pointing left up on its edge that's where you should start and then when you hit you have to get ahead but we've been getting ahead today already you know how, what that feels a little bit more and before when you get ahead you'd leave it way right but now you've got a grip that's going to prevent that from happening quite so much and instead of hitting just a little punch shot you want to go to a place we can go all the way through to a finish so you can really test yeah. If you stay in balance, you've got a pretty good chance of it. Okay, so here we go. We're going to set up to this one. Now, if we do this well from here, what should happen? We shouldn't pop it up. Mm. That's what should happen. Okay, so that's a really good one to be able to fix. So get into there. Good. Now let me see the left-hand grip. Okay, so easy, easy, easy. No choking down. So you're a little too fast with the right hand. So take this one completely off. Start with this together, and that's straight up and down. Pad on the right first. Thumb on the right second, and then while this stays together, fingers on the left last. Immediately pull it towards you, and now here's the test you should do for a little while. Take this off, hold it out in front of you like that, and then you take a T, and you make the T be parallel to the leading edge of the club, straight up and down, and when I do this, I have to hit that pad. Not this one, that pad. Mm, okay, okay, That is not too closed. Okay, so that's down there, and now when you have three in a row, it's going to fit into the pocket formed by that hand. Okay. That V pointing straight up is perfect. Now you do the same thing, three in a row, beautiful. Get this to be over here, upturn thumb so that stays together. That does not touch. You're back here. Feels really curved in your left wrist, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Crazy. Okay, good, <laughs> good. Okay, so now step away for the practice. So you're gonna go straight back here. You're gonna get steeper to flatter. You're gonna have your hands ahead and twist out of the way and come to there. That's going to start it to the right, and the grip will make it not go so far right. Mm -hmm. You're going to continue around to here, and it's going to go all the way up to here. It's going to be up behind here, and the crowd will be going wild. <laughs> okay, nice and smooth, but keep moving fast. Good, excellent. Okay, now what are we looking for here? No pop-ups. Yeah. Okay, good luck. Here we go. Club right against the ball. Good. Here we go. Sweep it off of there.
Okay, bounced into a little, that's okay. Twist a little faster. If you hit it fat, it means you didn't turn quite enough. I know it's a little scary to go fast, but you're very athletic, you can do this. Here we go. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, okay, that's all right. Is your grip too closed, uh, Jerome? No, no, it must not be. Huh, huh, huh. Yeah. So see, when you get a little cue like that, you start getting a feeling like, well, maybe I'm okay. Maybe that's just going to be fine. Now, the last thing is if your grip's fine and you leave it to the right, the body portion is what's got to happen. So you got to get down to here, and that one's open, and that one's square, and that one's closed. So you got to keep turning. If you throw the hips forward like that, then you, you can't do When you stop turning, the club stops closing. So that continuing rotation that comes all the way around there, mm -hmm. that's the thing. When we were trying to miss the strings, we were continuing to turn. On that one, you got the weight to go forward by going like this, and then there's nothing closing the club. Mm -hmm. So you want to feel like you can come around to here, and I want you to point this right at that, that red uh, gas can over there. Mm -hmm. And in one motion, come down back and go through to there again. Wow, that's a long way around again. Okay, oh. now this time go up to your neck when you're done. Good, now do it fast. Hmm, does that feel like the last one? No. Okay, okay, all right, now final one of the day. One last practice swing that feels that way to you. Try to stay in balance and do it. Very good, whatever else happens, you're gonna do that. Good luck. Wow, that's a real golf shot. Congratulations, buddy. <laughs> Okay. Let's well go, done. Mike. Well done. Well done. Okay, so quick review for today. Um, uh, your your head should hurt right now. It's yeah. Yeah. Okay. A little bit. <laughs> okay. But see, see, I don't want you to think the analytical process is a chore. It's just if this, then that. Yeah. Okay. You got to check for certain things that you know are correct and certain things that you know you're doing. But if there's something that's a shortcoming in your ball striking or in the shot that you're trying to do, you got to start going backwards and start f figuring out what must be going on that's causing this bad thing to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know enough about it now that you have things to try. But but what the big thing I want you to take out of today is it's hard to be set up well enough to do a good test. And then sometimes when you think you're doing what you want to do, you might not actually be doing it. If there was 10,000 things to fix, it'd be really confusing. But there's only seven things that can happen. Push, start right, pull, start left. Slice, curve right, hook, curve left. Fat, thin, or topping it, or shank. Hit it off the edge and go away over there. So every one of those things is caused by a specific position, a specific problem. If you are set up well, and you know what to try to do, and you start doing testing, you should be able, really, you should be able to make one of those problems start to go away. Mm. Now, if you do that, and another thing creeps in, that's not unusual. The, the problems usually come in pairs. Yeah. Okay, so if you're pulling it, you're going to learn to slice, aren't you? If you learn to hook and you're pulling it, it's really a bad shot, isn't it? So you're going to have to learn to start it to the right, but you can't learn both at the same time. So if you get your grip on well and you start to hook it a little more, oh, okay, well, that's good. Well, now starting to, the ball to the right by being steeper to flatter and hands ahead will make sense to you and will work better. Yeah. But if you try to start it to the right while you're slicing it a lot, why would you want to start it to the right? It's going to make it worse, isn't it? So, so when we're going to go out and play, There'll be lots of times where you're going to get to the shot. I'm going to give you the right club. There's going to be two little tees stuck in the ground. I'm going to tell you where we're aiming. You're going to say, that doesn't look right to me. And you're going to take a practice swing. And if it's off the ground, you're going to hit the ground past it. If it's a driver, you're not going to hit the ground at all. And then we're going to do a test. Now, yeah. it's going to look to everyone else like a golf shot, but we're actually doing a test, aren't we? <laughs> okay. And so once you get to the point where there are more things you can rely on than things you're unsure of, that's when you get the confidence where you could really go low and be the scratch golfer you want to be. Perfect. Love good it. job, buddy. Good job. Thanks, buddy. Very good. Excellent. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I know that was a lot of information to take in. So watch this video five times, but I swear it's going to be super helpful every time you go out. Cause and effect is the name of the game, and this is what we did today. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this type of content. Hopefully all these lessons and all these videos are benefiting your game. And if so, drop that like because it means the world to me. Stay tuned, subscribe, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.